Welcome to Elite Expert Insider Podcast, where we will inspire, motivate, and educate entrepreneurs, innovators, and growth seekers. Brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, making the best and brightest in the industry number one best selling authors. 80% of people say they want to write a book. We're assuming that's the same for you. If so, contact us at www.eliteonlinepublishing.com and make your book a reality. Hey, everyone. It's Melanie Johnson here with Jen Foster. Hi, Jen. Hey, everyone. How's it going today? Oh, man. It is going so great today. We are going to learn how to be resilient. You know when you have those tough times and you feel like you have to plow through them? Well, already I've had this aha moment that we have to learn to practice resilience even when things are going well. So there are some key strategies and things we're going to learn about resiliency and leadership today. We have Joan MacArthur Blair here, and we have Jeannie Cockrell here, and they are the authors of the book, Building Resilience with Appreciative Inquiry. So before we get started on this road down resilience, make sure that you are um, subscribed to our podcast because we're always bringing you just this awesome information and amazing people to share it with you. And um, leave us a message. We'd love to hear from you and uh, write a review for us. We'd love that as well. So, and one more thing, if you are looking to become an author, just like Joan and uh, Jeannie are, please contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. We make our authors bestsellers and teach you how to use your book for your business to grow it and use it as a branding tool and share your story. So welcome, Joan and Jeannie, today. Um, I'm really excited. You know, this is kind of an interesting topic, resiliency, especially today. There's so much going on in the world. Um, we were talking, I was talking to my mom the other day. She's they're talking about anxiety for kids to go back to school. We never talked about anxiety for kids to go back to school. You just went back to school. I mean, so there's anxiety, there's OCD, there's all these things that you're having bombarded with, um, not to mention the economy and the world and all those issues and shootings that we have to learn to be resilient through all the emotional ups and downs. So I'm so glad you're here to help us walk through the process of how we can be better at that. Well, we're really looking forward to the conversation this morning with you. Uh, it is a really complex world we're living in at the moment. And, uh, and so I think it requires kind of complex uh, strategies for people to deal with things like their daily resilience. So it's great to be here this morning. And change is always going to be constant. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. What you well, can count on is that things are always going to count change. on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The change right. the complexity, yeah. Yes. That's right. Well, Joan and Jeannie, tell us a little bit about yourselves, where you came from, and how you got into this, learning all of this stuff about resilience and writing these books. Well, uh, I'm Jeannie, by the way, because there's two of us here. The thing says Joan, that's Joan. <laughs> uh, well, we've, we're practitioners in appreciative inquiry, which we'll talk a bit more about. Uh, but it's basically to look at what's going well and how can you get more of that. And as we worked with it, with individuals and teams and organizations to whatever, strategic planning, team building, all this, we realized that there was another outcome that was huge. And that was this notion of resilience. They were able to actually carry the hope forward in their lives, even through those challenging times. So we so got interested in talking to leaders, and especially those who do practice appreciative inquiry, questions around how do they work with appreciative inquiry through the despair of the challenging times but also through the hope and how do you continue that hopeful view of life and then how do you forgive because that's the key place mm -hmm. in that shift always to hope and therefore resilience we call it appreciative resilience so we became fascinated with these three ideas of hope despair and forgiveness because you really think about you know, uh, resilience, you kind of think, well, it's returning to hope, isn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. But we began more and more as we talked to leaders to realize that there's some really interesting things at play in the intersection between hope, despair, and forgiveness. That being resilient is about practicing hope and a hopeful view on a daily basis. That in times of despair, when we find those challenging times, it's really about what are my strengths today? And it could be just showing up. That's mm -hmm. all I could do today. But it's a strength and to focus on that strength in times of despair. And when we talked to leaders, we realized that something very powerful was at play in resilience. And that was the ability to forgive. And we don't mean forgiveness as in, you know, that person over there made me angry. And so consequently, I forgive them. 
we mean forgiveness on kind of the grand scale. The deep recognition as leaders that we don't have a do-over in life, that we, uh, that we need to really begin to enter into that state of grace and move forward. I think so many times people don't realize the forgiveness is really for them um, because you're carrying like this huge you know, weight, this boulder around when, with you when you're not forgiving. And when you finally release that, it's just this light feeling that it's not there, but, it, but it's a constant process. Even though you forgive, the boulder tries to come back at you, I think, a lot of ways. Um, and I love it that you have to practice it all the time. Now, Jeannie, you said you've gone through some really challenging times, and I imagine that you've had to work through that forgiveness phase and the hope phase. Tell us about that and how that influenced you. Well, I, I think my most challenging time was when I almost died in a car accident and woke up without even knowing what had happened and couldn't move and couldn't do anything uh, and realized that something terrible had happened. But I immediately went, but what can I do? Right? So that's always the kind of reframing into, oh, this is a disaster. Can't speak, can't move, whatever. But I could smile. And that was the first thing I could do. And I could feel the happiness of the fact I was surrounded by people who were there to my family and the medical people and all that. So I kept focusing and that's a practice, that reframing on, focusing on, okay, what, what's wrong? There's tons of things, but what is working here? And what's the tiniest yeah. little things that will help me keep that hopeful view? In the, my case of that I will survive because the medical people yeah. weren't sure whether I would. And so to keep that kind of hopeful view of the practice of it is to continue to smile. Or when asked to do my first step and I thought, how can I possibly step? You know, <laughs> my yeah. leg was crushed. I have a titanium nail on my femur. My ribs are crushed. My hip was crushed. You know, that one step I fell down, the physio said, well, tomorrow we'll try. Maybe you can stand and get to the chair and just turn. Or, and, and just be encouraged by, wow, you did once. You tried, right? And sometimes that's the practice of trying and then saying that was good enough because that was where I got today. And tomorrow, yeah. you know, I'll get somewhere else. So that's what we mean by hope is that expectation that what can happen is meant to happen. And if you'll keep that notion of trying and carrying forward. Mm -hmm. And that's so much you were saying before, the appreciative resilience, right? You're, yes. you're appreciating those little tiny steps of things that you did that yeah. were good. Yeah. And even if it was a failure, it was still good. You, yes. you said you fell, right. but you still, you tried and you took that step and it, and it moved you forward to the next step. Yeah. And, you know, Melanie, you talked about, you know, that's kind of bolder, you know, that keeps kind of reattaching. And I often think of despair like Velcro. You know, you rip it off and you go, okay, you know, I practice forgiveness. I'm in this deep practice. I can move forward. And all of a sudden you get up the next morning and it's re-adhered to you again. Right? <laughs> and so, so one of the things we write a lot about is this idea of practice, that it really, resilience really is a practice. It's mm -hmm. not something we're good at. It's not something that we're better than our next door neighbor at. It's a practice that each of us can undertake and refine. And we really, as we talk to leaders, as they practice hope and a hopeful view, it's like polishing the stone of resilience. Then they consequently have uh, a practice to return to in times of despair. We think about despair as that, you know, train that arrives at, you know, 3 a.m. in the morning. It's on welcome. We didn't ask for it. And there it is. And, uh, um, you know, in, in Jeannie's story of her accident, she was very seriously injured. And Months and months and months went by, you know, and uh, um, and I'm doing that thing that partners do, you know, take take care and all those things. And I realized one morning I woke up in despair. And it took me a long time, took me years to realize that I wasn't in despair about her accident or the consequences in uh, her business or our life. I was in despair because I always thought I'd get to say goodbye. And I realized that actually maybe that wasn't actually going to happen in life. And so despair is one of those things. It just comes to visit. And so in leadership lives, it can be caused by, you know, not getting your project done, not the vision, not getting created, you know, your board of trustees not liking you, your stock, stake, 
uh, stockholders <laughs> being mad at you, you know, getting fired, all the things that happen to us. Um, your podcast not having enough listeners, you know, despair comes, <laughs> you know, from fascinating things in life. Um, and so we talk to leaders a lot about what they practice, finding that tiny strength. Yeah, that hope, hope. Yeah, like say, it, when you lose hope, I think it even says in the Bible, when you lose hope, you lose everything. You always have to yeah. have hope. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the fundamental definition of despair, right? The loss of hope. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I love that you, you focus on those wins. It's like, you know, there's, there's a lot of failures that we didn't reach the goal that we had that day or, or like the despair keeps coming at us and we feel like we're kind of overloaded with that despair. But having that outlook of that appreciative, appreciative and what, was, what, what went right today or what did I do mm. right? What did I try that I maybe felt uncomfortable trying? And those are the wins. Like, I think that gives that hope is re coming back to that appreciativeness. Yeah. And there's lots of practices and lots of people have lots of practices that we don't even address, right? But mm -hmm. one of our practices is to start every morning writing down our gratitudes. Mm -hmm. for the day. And that is just that frames your whole day and makes the days, even if you've woken up going, oh, I worried in the night about this. Mm -hmm. But by the time you've actually sat down and written some grat three, three gratitudes, that's all it takes. One thing you plan to do to make it a successful, wonderful, happy day and a vision for the day. And we do that every morning and it just, it just shifts things. I mean, it doesn't mean that those worries haven't gone away, but now they just go on a list and you go, okay, I know I can do those things because I know I've got lots to be thankful for. Right. right. We had learned, I just got back from the eWomen's Network and one of the things they said was lean into your strengths. Yes. And um, I love that they gave this visual of this path, this beautiful path, a wooded tree that went over and it was like a lane that you walked down. And that was when you walk down that lane, it's so easy and breezy. You could run down there if you wanted. There's no obstacles in your way. And then like your mid strengths are like, well, you have to pay attention because there's rocks and, and there's maybe branches and things that you have to watch your footing because you could twist your ankle and the other one is like oh my gosh i gotta take a machete to get through here to go through there and it's you know so like focus on the the clear path lean into those strengths that you have yeah theirs was more business minded it's like okay so on your middle strengths get someone else to do those things and you know the lesser strengths get someone yeah. else to do those if you can and yeah. when you were laying in that bed and all you could do was smile you know you had other people that were taking care of, taking care of the other needs that you had at that time and your strength was maybe to get them to smile back at you yes you great so yeah well tell us oh go ahead you're good we, we talk about that a, a fair bit in our book that idea of how how do you know that somebody actually would reach down their hand and help you stand up who's going to hand you that tool you need to get through the forest mm -hmm. and we talk to leaders a lot about that and we talk mm -hmm. to leaders about do you know how to reach down your hand and help somebody else stand up in life and leadership and so it, that is important that idea of of not just asking somebody else to do something for you but recognizing that in resilience the practice of resilience is not done alone we do it in community mm -hmm. um, and particularly in times of despair I think it's easy to isolate ourselves as leaders uh, thinking we should know all the answers when really somebody's just standing there with a tool that could help us get through the forest if we just asked and then uh, people we interviewed said, oh, we never talk about despair because if you talk about despair as a leader, then you're looked at as not a strong leader. Yeah. So how amazing to have opportunity because all our, our book's full of reflective questions and, and little exercises people can do with their teams and each other and so on. Have that conversation about things that have been kind of taboo. Uh, and it's a, it's a freeing because once you start down that road, you get hope because you say, I'm not alone in this. Yeah. And I was just reading, I think it was in um, Inc. Magazine or on another podcast that a lot of uh, top leaders tend to be lonely or feel alone or success and successful entrepreneurs, they start to feel isolated. And just even though they've got their company is successful, they're making money, but they're feeling like they're isolated, then they're having despair about that. And, and I love the connection that you say to know that you're not alone and make sure you keep that circle mm -hmm. around you, not to be in a vacuum by yourself. Mm -hmm. I like that. Well, Jeannie, tell us, um, you wrote a poem, or is it Joan? Joan, you Joan have wrote the poem. poem. Yeah. <laughs> so read us the poem that you, is it, is it in the book as well? Yeah, this is a, uh, we start every chapter in the book with a poem, and I think in some ways it 
helps people understand kind of the, the ideas. This one is a poem on hope. My beautiful friend, Hope, you point me toward the sun, you shelter me in the rain, you trumpet my successes and hold me in my sorrow, ever whispering, rise up, rise up. Beautiful. Wow, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Well, I think the main message today is to make sure that you have hope. Um, you peel away that Velcro every morning of despair <laughs> by saying what you're grateful for, um, having your vision for the day, and leaning into your strengths. Um, so remember to do that. So uh, say what you're grateful for, have your vision of the day, peel off that Velcro every morning, and um, you know, and keep hope in your mirror. I know everything happens for a reason. Sometimes something might not go your way, but that's because it's making way for the new wonderful thing that's coming in that's in store for you and has to get the old out of the way to make room for the new. Yeah. So uh, we want to encourage you again to um, uh, subscribe to our podcast. If you're looking to become an author, make sure that you um, contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com and tell us where we can reach you if they want to find out more and where your book is. Well, they can find our book, uh, Building Resilience with Appreciative Inquiry, at their favorite bookseller, Amazon Online. Um, we're big fans of standalone booksellers, but they can find <laughs> our book uh, at uh, Booksellers Anywhere. Um, and they, of course, they can visit us uh, at our website, uh, kakelmacarthurblair.com, uh, where they'll find all kinds of resources, mm -hmm. things we've written about resilience and appreciative resilience, and they can also uh, find the first section of the book there for free to, to read so they can uh, uh, take away some ideas. The other thing that um, uh, is in our book that uh, some people say, to, uh, to us, we gave away our secret sauce. We put into the back of the book, the full workshop on appreciative resilience. And wow. we did it for a very particular mm -hmm. reason. We believe in leadership. And we want people to take that and to use it to amplify their leadership. Because I think if, you know, we started at the beginning talking about the complexity that leaders lead in. And I think we wanted to support leaders in their incredible work in the world. That's yeah. excellent. I want to make note too that, you know, I had this uh, thought in my head before that, oh, you know, I'm running a small company and um, I'm a single mom and I don't really need the leadership stuff. I need sales. I need marketing. I need, you know, all of that type of thing for my business. And then all of a sudden all the light bulbs went off on my head that I'm the leader of my household. Absolutely. Um, and all of the leadership things, when the light bulb went off, I shifted and started using those things to run my home. And um, I told a girlfriend recently, I mean, she, she's a married woman. I mean, she has a partner and I'm a single person, but I said, you're still the leader of your home too. You need to direct and have a vision of what you want your house to be like and how you want the relationships to be like. You have to lead your life and your relationships. So don't think that you don't need the leadership stuff. Oh, I, you know, I'm a mom at home or I'm not working. I don't need leader. You need leadership. You need this book because you're leading your life and you're leading your family. So make sure you get it no matter what phase you are in your life. Make sure you um, grab their book. Yeah, now, I mean, that's a wonderful, wonderful way to describe this because we're we're continuing when we're working with people and speaking and so on is we describe leaders as any people leading their life and moving things forward in the way they want it to happen and the visions they have. And that's every every mom, every person that has relationships with other people. I mean, it all it you work together to actually move the world to a better place. I love that. I gave a good pitch for you. <laughs> Yeah. We'll put that link up at the bottom for those of you watching on YouTube. It's kakelmacarthur-blair.com. That's C-O-C-K-E-L-L macarthur-b-l-a-i-r.com. For those of you who are listening, you can also find that on our show notes on our blog at eliteonlinepublishing.com. Well, um, Make sure, again, that you subscribe to us and leave us a review. We'd love to have a review from you. And uh, remember, if again, if you want to publish a book, and um, just contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. One of us will get back with you. You can fill out the submission form and see if we're a great fit for you. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks a lot. That was fabulous. If you'd like to create the most powerful advertising tool for your business, contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com, where we will help you create, publish, and make your book a number one bestseller, and show you how to get new leads and more revenue for your business.
If you'd like to check us out on our Facebook page, we have a free book for you as our gift. Just go and click free book. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment for our podcast. We would love to hear from you.